Do you know who this great person is? Well, this is Carolus Linnaeus, the father of taxonomy. He divided the living world into two kingdoms, Kingdom Plantae and Kingdom Animalia. However, if all organisms were classified as either plants or animals, where would lower living forms such as bacteria be placed? Scientists placed bacteria in Kingdom Plantae because they contained rigid cell walls. However, bacteria were prokaryotes, whereas all plants were eukaryotes. Did you know that in the two-system classification of Linnaeus, microbes such as Euglena showed up in both kingdoms, Plantae and Animalia? Euglena was classified as such because it possessed the characteristics of both. It was photosynthetic, like plants, and could move with the help of flagella, like animals. Such confusion arose with classification of other species too. Organisms such as slime mold, lichens, protozoans, diatoms could not be classified either as plants or animals. Such shortcomings of the two kingdom classification were overcome when scientist R. H. Whittaker published the five kingdom classification in the year 1969. The living world was thus divided into five kingdoms, Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. The criteria used by scientist R. H. Whittaker for classification were cell structure, thallus organization, mode of nutrition, reproduction, and phylogenetic relationship. All living organisms possess either of the two types of cells, prokaryotic cells or eukaryotic cells. Prokaryote is a Greek word. Pro means before, and karyon means nucleus. So prokaryotic means before nucleus. As the prokaryotic cells lack nucleus, the DNA in these cells lies exposed in the cell cytoplasm. On the other hand, the word eukaryote comes from U, which means true, and carrion, which means nucleus. Eukaryotes are cells that have a true nucleus. Eukaryotes possess membrane-bound organelles such as the endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, and Golgi apparatus that carry out specialized function in the cell. In the Five Kingdom classification, R. H. Whittaker placed all prokaryotes in the kingdom Monera, and all organisms placed in the kingdom Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia are eukaryotes. The early living forms to have evolved on Earth were unicellular, which means they consisted of only single cells and over the years evolved the multicellular forms of life. However, the unicellular forms exist even today. Bacteria, blue-green algae, amoeba and plasmodium are unicellular organisms. In the Five Kingdom classification, all unicellular organisms are placed under the kingdom Monera and kingdom Protista, whereas the multicellular organisms are placed under the kingdoms fungi, plantae, and animalia. Both Monera and Protista consist of unicellular organisms. What then is the difference between these two kingdoms? Remember that Monerans are prokaryotes, whereas Protists are eukaryotes. Organisms are classified as autotrophic and heterotrophic depending on their mode of nutrition. Autotrophs that prepare their own food are either photoautotrophic or chemoautotrophic. Photoautotrophic or photosynthetic organisms such as plants and some bacteria produce sugars from carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight. On the other hand, chemoautotrophs synthesize organic material by oxidation of inorganic chemical compounds. 
An example of chemoautotrophs is the bacteria that thrive in the deep sea hydrothermal vents. Heterotrophic organisms can be saprophytic, parasitic, and holozoic. Saprophytes are organisms that feed on dead and decaying matter. For example, the slime mold growing on bark mulch is a saprophyte. Did you know that mushroom is a saprophyte? Mushrooms possess enzymes that decompose lignin in wood and thus derive the nutrition needed for survival. Parasites are organisms that live on or in the body of another organism from which they obtain their nutrition. Organisms of the Giardia species and malaria-causing Plasmodium species are examples of parasites. Holozoic organisms feed on other organisms or solid organic matter. The organic substances are digested, absorbed and then assimilated. Higher animals and humans exhibit holozoic nutrition. However, did you know that there are some carnivorous plants too that trap insects and protozoans for food? Such plants are called insectivore plants. Check the mode of nutrition of organisms across the five kingdoms. If you compare a plant cell to an animal cell, you will notice that plant cells possess cell walls, which animal cells lack. In the Five Kingdom classification, Kingdom Monera, some protists, fungi and plants show presence of the cell wall. Animal cells lack cell walls. However, the structure of the cell wall is different in organisms of different kingdoms. Monerans, such as bacteria, have cell walls made up of a polymer of sugars and amino acids called the peptidoglycan layer. Protists and plants have cell walls made up of cellulose and pectin. However, the cell walls of fungi lack cellulose. They are made up of a long-chain polymer named chitin. In 1969, R. H. Whittaker classified life into five kingdoms. This system has placed all prokaryotic, unicellular bacteria under Kingdom Monera. During early 1970s, Dr. Carl Weiss found an unknown group of prokaryotic organisms living in extreme environments. These organisms inhabited the deep sea hydrothermal vents, acid lakes, the Dead Sea, marshy lands, environments that were never suspected to contain a profusion of life. Their prokaryotic appearance readily placed them under Kingdom Monera, named Archaebacteria, meaning ancient bacteria. Soon it was realized that the genes of archaebacteria were more closely related to eukaryotes than to the prokaryotic bacteria. Moreover, their cell walls and plasma membranes were made up of different components. Moreover, archaebacteria expressed different nucleotide sequences in their RNAs. The RNA components of the ribosomes are called the rRNA. They carry out the same functions in all living organisms with very little structural changes over time. The rRNA sequences can be matched up between two organisms. Upon these findings, Weiss proposed a new category of classification of life, the domain, which means a group or generalized taxa consisting of one or more kingdoms. All living organisms were placed in the three-domain system under Domain Archaea, 
domain bacteria, and domain eukarya. Archaea are prokaryotic cells with cell walls completely lacking peptidoglycan. The archaeal cell membrane contains unbranched fatty acid chains attached to glycerol by ether linkages. Some genes of archaea are similar to those of eukarya but are not similar to those of bacteria. Archaea contain unique rRNA sequences that are distinctly different from the rRNAs of bacteria and eukarya. Domain archaea includes thermophiles, acidophiles, halophiles and methanogens. The ether linkage in the membranes of archaea is more stable than the ester linkage in the membranes of bacteria and eukarya, which is able to withstand extreme heat, acid and saline conditions. Bacteria are prokaryotic cells with peptidoglycan in their cell walls. The cell membrane of bacteria contains unbranched fatty acid chains attached to glycerol by ester linkages. Bacteria contain unique rRNA sequences that are distinctly different from the rRNAs of archaea and eukarya. Domain bacteria include mycoplasmas, cyanobacteria, gram-positive bacteria, and gram-negative bacteria. Mycoplasmas completely lack cell walls and many species are pathogenic to humans. Cyanobacteria or blue-green algae contain chlorophyll and are photosynthetic autotrophs. Gram-positive bacteria contain a large amount of peptidoglycan in their cell walls. Gram-negative bacteria contain a thin layer of peptidoglycan in their cell walls. Eukarya are eukaryotic cells either unicellular or multicellular. Their cell membranes contain unbranched fatty acid chains attached to glycerol by ester linkages. All eukarya do not possess a cell wall. If present, the wall does not contain any peptidoglycan. Eukarya contain unique rRNA sequences that are distinctly different from the rRNAs of archaea and bacteria. Domain eukarya is divided into four kingdoms, Kingdom Protista, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Plantae and Kingdom Animalia. Kingdom Protista includes unicellular eukaryotes, free-living, or parasites. Members of the Kingdom Fungi have both unicellular and multicellular eukaryotes with no chlorophyll in the cell and cell walls composed exclusively of chitin. Examples of classes in Kingdom Fungi are Phycomycetes, Ascomycetes, Basidiomycetes, Deuteromycetes. Kingdom Plantae includes multicellular eukaryotes with chlorophyll in the cell and cell walls made of cellulose. Kingdom Animalia encompasses heterotrophic, multicellular eukaryotes completely lacking cell walls and chlorophyll. In 1892, Dmitry Ivanovsky established by a simple experiment that the causative agent of tobacco mosaic disease was smaller than any bacterium then known. He found that the agent causing the disease was small enough to pass through ceramic filters that are small enough to trap all bacteria. In 1898, Martinus Willem Bejerink 
replicated Ivanovsky's experiment and demonstrated that the fulcrate remained highly infectious even after being diluted many times. He called the fluid contagium vivum fluidum, which means infectious living fluid. He also established that the viruses possess the property of replication, common to all living things. He showed that unlike bacteria, which can reproduce independently, this life form could reproduce only by infecting tobacco leaves. This mysterious life form became known as tobacco mosaic virus or TMV, the first virus to be recognized. Wendell Meredith Stanley crystallized the tobacco mosaic virus in 1935. In 1936, shortly after this, he isolated nucleic acid and proved that withdrawing this material left the crystals without any virus activity. Therefore, he concluded that the virus is a nucleoprotein. Viruses are regarded as intermediate between non-living things and living organisms. They are considered non-living since they are non-cellular and can be crystallized like simple chemical substances. On the other hand, they show characteristics of living organisms as they can reproduce inside a living cell. Viruses are a large group of disease-causing agents which are fundamentally different from all cellular forms of life. Viruses are infectious nucleic acid encapsulated in a protein coat. They do not possess any cytoplasm or metabolism of their own. Since they do not have metabolism of their own, they must penetrate host cells where their nucleic acid directs the replication of viral macromolecular components which are then assembled into new viruses which are then released from the host cell. Viruses are obligate parasites and cannot replicate in the absence of their host. The host can be a plant, an animal or a bacterial cell. All viruses possess either RNA or DNA as their genome. No virus has yet been found that possesses both RNA and DNA. In general, viruses that infect plants have single-stranded RNA, whereas viruses that infect animals have either single or double-stranded RNA or DNA. Tobacco mosaic virus has single-stranded RNA. Animal viruses such as coronavirus and rheovirus have single and double-stranded RNA respectively. Fox virus, another animal virus, has double-stranded DNA and parvovirus has single-stranded DNA. Viruses infecting bacteria known as bacteriophages usually have double-stranded DNA. T2, T4 and T6 colophages possess double-stranded DNA. Viruses cause many diseases in man. Some of them are influenza, measles, chickenpox, hepatitis B, AIDS, yellow fever, Viruses cause diseases in plants as well. Some of the common diseases are tobacco mosaic diseases, leaf curl of tomato, bean mosaic disease, leaf roll of potato, etc. Symptoms of vital disease of plants range from mosaic formation, leaf rolling and curling, stunted growth, yellowing and vein clearing etc. Tobacco mosaic virus is a slender rod-shaped virus measuring about 18 nanometer in diameter and 300 nanometer in length. The virus has a central core of ribonucleic acid which is surrounded by protein. 
The protein part makes the external sheath of the rod-shaped virus and is called the capsid. It is made up of identical subunits called capsomeres. The capsomeres are closely packed and arranged in a left-handed helix. The nucleic acid present in the virus is a single-stranded RNA molecule. It runs along the entire length of the rod and is present in the form of a spirally coiled helix at a radius of 4 nanometer inside the protein sheath. It remains protruded from one end of the virus rod. Viruses that attack the bacterial cells are called bacteriophages. Well-studied bacteriophages are colophages which attack Escherichia coli. The colophage has a shape resembling a tadpole, having a polyhedral head and a tail of approximately equal length. All the nucleic acid is located within the head and the tail serves as an organ of attachment to host cells. The head has an outer coat of protein enclosing a single molecule of double-stranded DNA. The tail is attached to the head by the neck and the collar. It is much narrower than the head and is composed of a contractile sheath surrounding a hollow central core. The tail sheath protein bears a disc-like hexagonal plate at its distal end which bears six spikes. Six tail fibers are attached to the base plate. The base plate and tail fibers are involved in the binding of the phage to the bacterial cell. In 1971, T.O. Diner discovered an infectious agent that was smaller than viruses and caused the potato spindle tuber disease. He called this infectious agent a viroid. Viroids are a class of extremely simple infectious agents that are smaller than viruses and lack their protein coat. They exist as circular single-stranded RNA molecules some double-stranded regions that contain 300 to 400 nucleotides. To date, they have been found only to cause diseases of plants. Degenerative diseases of the nervous system of vertebrates such as Kuru and Scrapey are caused by macromolecules that are smaller than any known virus. These infectious macromolecules are called prions. Prions are largely composed of proteins with a molecular weight near 30,000. Prions are very slow acting and it takes about 10 years for the symptoms of a prion disease to show. They are virtually indestructible, as there is no known cure for prion diseases. Our body is made up of around 10 trillion cells. Do you know that the number of bacteria residing in an average human body is around 10 times more than the number of cells? Bacteria are present almost everywhere, in water, deserts, snow and soil. Not only are they the most widespread of organisms, they are also believed to be the oldest ones. Scientists have classified living beings into five kingdoms, out of which one kingdom contains only bacteria, the kingdom Monera. The tiny living beings of the kingdom Monera have some characteristics in common. They all are microscopic single-celled organisms. This group comprises bacteria and cyanobacteria, or blue-green algae. All organisms belonging to the kingdom Monera lack well-defined nuclei and cell organelles. Such cells are called prokaryotic cells. 
This is the defining characteristic of the kingdom Monera. Although these organisms are simple in their structure, as a group they show great diversity. Based on their shape, bacteria can be of four main types. Cocci are spherical. Bacilli are rod-like in shape. Vibrio are comma-shaped and spirilla are spiral in shape. Most of the monerans possess a cell wall, while a few types, such as mycoplasma, do not have one. Some monerans are autotrophic and can synthesize their own food. The heterotrophic monerans derive nutrients from their environment. Let us look at some of the life processes in the monerans. Autotrophic bacteria prepare their own food with the help of either photosynthesis or chemosynthesis. Photosynthetic monerans, such as the blue-green algae or cyanobacteria, use sunlight to synthesize their food. Examples of such bacteria are Nostoc and Anabena. On the basis of their name, can you guess how chemosynthetic bacteria synthesize their food? Chemosynthetic bacteria, such as Nitrosomonas and Thiobacillus, prepare food by using chemicals like nitrates, ammonia, and hydrogen sulfide. Heterotrophic monerans are not capable of synthesizing their own food, but derive it from other organisms or from dead and decaying material. Examples of heterotrophic bacteria are E. coli and rhizobium. Most bacteria reproduce by binary fission. In this process, the bacterial cell duplicates its DNA and cytoplasm and then divides to give rise to two cells. Some bacteria survive unfavorable environmental conditions by the process of spore formation. In this process, the cell loses water and is enclosed by a thick covering. This structure is called a spore. When the conditions are favorable, the spore gives rise to a new bacterial cell. Bacteria can also reproduce sexually by the process called conjugation. Two bacterial cells are attached together with the help of a tube-like structure through which DNA, the genetic material from one cell, gets transferred to another. Scientists have divided the kingdom Monera into two groups, Archibacteria and Eubacteria. Can you guess what the prefix Archi means? Archi means ancient. Archibacteria are the oldest organisms on Earth. They live in extreme habitats and can survive in those harsh environmental conditions because of their specialized cell wall. Based on their habitats, archibacteria can be of different types. Methanogens live in methane-rich environments, such as marshy areas and the digestive tracts of cattle. One group of archibacteria are the halophiles. The word halophile means salt lover. They live in areas that are extremely high in salt content, for example the Dead Sea. Thermoacidophiles reside in areas that are extremely acidic and hot, such as hot sulfur springs and volcanic vents. The second group of bacteria is eubacteria. They differ from archaebacteria mainly in the structure of the cell wall and in their metabolic processes. Their cell wall is rigid and some of them possess special structures called flagella for movement. 
Let us look at different types of eubacteria. Cyanobacteria, or blue-green algae, are the most prominent photosynthetic bacteria. They possess chlorophyll, a substance similar to the chlorophyll present in plants. Other photosynthetic bacteria also possess special bacteriochlorophyll for the absorption of light. Cyanobacteria form filaments or colonies and live on land, shallow areas in oceans, and polluted water bodies. Cyanobacteria are generally covered with a gelatin-like sheath. Some of them have special cells called heterocysts that fix atmospheric nitrogen. The next type of eubacteria is the chemosynthetic bacteria, which synthesize food using chemical energy. These bacteria play a major role in recycling nutrients such as sulfur, iron, phosphorus and nitrogen. Heterotrophic bacteria are mostly decomposers. Many of them are beneficial in various ways. They are used in the production of antibiotics and in making yogurt and cheese. Some of them increase soil fertility by fixing nitrogen, while others clean up the environment by decomposing rotting materials and returning nutrients to the environment. Some heterotrophic monorants are harmful to us and other living beings. They are disease-causing pathogens that affect humans, plants, and animals. A few examples of disease caused by bacteria are tuberculosis, typhoid, cholera, and tetanus. Which are the smallest living cells ever known? They are mycoplasmas. They are grouped under eubacteria but are devoid of a cell wall. They can survive without oxygen. Most of them cause diseases in plants and animals. In the 1880s, malaria claimed the lives of many soldiers. At that time, the cause of this dreaded disease was not known. In an attempt to investigate the causative agent of malaria, a French military surgeon, Charles Laveron, saw colored bodies wriggling in the blood cells of a patient who had just died of malaria. Do you know what these colored bodies are? Charles Laveron went on to discover that a protozoan named Plasmodium causes malaria. Protozoans belong to kingdom Protista. According to the modern Five Kingdom classification, the living world is divided into five groups. Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. In Greek, Protist means the very first. Kingdom Protista is thus known to consist of organisms that are believed to have been the first living eukaryotes to evolve on Earth. Like all other eukaryotes, protists possess a well-defined membrane-bound nucleus. Protists may also possess other important cell organelles such as the mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, and the chloroplast. They may possess flagella or cilia for locomotion.
Where do protists live? Protists thrive in water bodies, in moist soil, and within the human body. Let's go back to the classification of the living world. Protists are eukaryotes. Other higher living groups such as fungi, plants and animals are eukaryotes too. How are the protists different from them? Most protists are unicellular and are thus different from the multicellular fungi, plants and animals. However, organisms belonging to Kingdom Protista show some resemblance to each of the higher living groups. Protists such as slime mold resemble members of the Kingdom fungi. Unicellular algae resemble members of the Kingdom plantae. Such protists are called phytoplanktons and they are free floating in water. Protozoans resemble members of the kingdom Animalia. They are also called zooplanktons as they are animal-like, free-floating organisms. Let's begin with a protist that resembles members of the kingdom fungi. One such protist is slime mold. Slime mold is a saprophyte. It depends on other dead organic matter for nourishment. Now let's look at protists that resemble members of the plant kingdom. We will first look at diatoms. Like other plants, diatoms contain chloroplasts and can prepare their own food. The walls of diatoms are made of silica. Over a period of time, the diatoms fossilize to form diatomaceous earth. Another group of protists resembling members of the plant kingdom are the dinoflagellates. Dinoflagellates are marine photosynthetic organisms having cell walls made up of stiff cellulose plates. A rapid increase in the population of red dinoflagellates makes the sea appear red. This is called the red tide. Now, let's talk about animal-like protists, the protozoans. Protozoans usually exist as parasites. They live in other living organisms and depend on them for food and shelter. There are four major groups of protozoans. Amoeboid protozoans, flagellated protozoans, ciliated protozoans, and sporozoans. Let us start with the first one, amoeboid protozoans. Do you know which organism is this? This irregular shaped cell is an amoeba. It is an example of an amoeboid protozoan. Amoeba moves and engulfs food with the help of pseudopods. Amoeba moves and engulfs food with the help of pseudopods. It has a food vacuole to digest food and a vacuole to excrete wastes. A classic example of an amoeboid protozoan is Entamoeba histolytica, which causes amoebiasis in humans. The protozoan spreads because of lack of sanitation. The next group of protozoans is the flagellated protozoans. As the name suggests, these organisms possess a flagella, which is a whip-like organelle used for locomotion. An example of a flagellated protozoan is the Trypanosoma species, which causes sleeping sickness in humans. The third group of protozoans is that of ciliated protozoans, which possess cilia for locomotion and food capture. The group of ciliated protozoans is best represented by the paramecium species. The paramecia have two types of nuclei, a small round micronucleus and a large macronucleus. In paramecium, 
The food captured by the cilia is digested in the food vacuole and excreted from the anal pore. The last group of protozoans is that of sporozoans, which reproduce by the formation of spores. This class includes all parasitic disease-causing protozoans, such as the malarial parasite, Plasmodium. Let's look at all four groups of animal-like protozoans. There exists one more group of protists that resembles plants as well as animals. They are the euglenoids. A common example of euglenoid is euglena. It possesses flagella for locomotion. Euglena lacks a cell wall and instead contains a protein-rich layer called the pellicle, which makes its body flexible. Euglenoids carry out photosynthesis in the presence of sunlight, and in the dark, they behave like heterotrophs, engulfing other plants and animals. Athlete's foot is a fungal infection with symptoms such as cracked, dry and itchy skin between the toes and at the sides of the feet. Fungi can cause many other infections in humans such as ringworm and candida. What else can these fungi do? Which kingdom do they belong to? Let us try to find the answers to these questions and many more. Fungi belong to Kingdom Fungi. They are a group of very diverse organisms such as the mold that grows on rotting bread, mushrooms we eat, the yeast we use for baking bread, and the organisms that spoil our leather goods during monsoon. Some of them, such as molds and rusts, are microscopic, while others, such as mushrooms and puffballs, are large. All fungi are eukaryotic organisms. Well, almost all, except for yeast and those like it, fungi are multicellular. They have cell walls. Most of them are made up of thread-like filaments called hyphae. Fungi have something in common with beetles, cockroaches, spiders, crabs and lobsters. Can you guess what it could be? Their cell wall is primarily made up of chitin, the material that forms the exoskeleton in these creatures. Fungi thrive in warm and moist places. They are found just about anywhere, in air, water, soil, trees, on the food in our kitchen, and they can even feel comfortable on CDs. Fungi lack chlorophyll, and therefore, they are all heterotrophic. Most of them feed on decaying matter and are called saprophytes, while some others are parasitic in nature. Some are even symbiotic, as in the association of fungi and algae, which are called lichen. Do you know how algae and fungi are beneficial to each other? In lichen, the alga prepares food and the fungus provides water, minerals and shelter. Fungi can reproduce in three ways. Vegetative reproduction is carried out by processes such as fragmentation and budding. Asexual reproduction involves the production of various types of spores. In sexual reproduction, spores are formed in a special structure called the fruiting body. On the basis of structure and reproduction, fungi are classified into four major classes. 
Phycomycetes, Ascomycetes, Basidiomycetes, and Deuteromycetes. Fungi of this group are found on decaying material and are plant parasites. They reproduce asexually by producing spores that move using flagella, called zoospores. They also produce non-motile spores called aplanospores. The examples of this group are the bread mold called rhizopus and albugo. These fungi can be saprophytic, parasitic or decomposers. They are commonly called sac fungi. Asexual reproduction takes place by the production of conidia in conidiophores. This group derives their name from the sexual spores called ascospores that are produced in sacs called asci. Their fruiting body is called an ascocarp. Examples are unicellular yeast and multicellular fungi like penicillium and aspergillus. This group includes principally the mushrooms, puffballs and plant parasites such as rusts. This group generally does not exhibit asexual reproduction and commonly reproduces vegetatively using fragmentation. Their fruiting bodies are called basidiocarps which produce basidiospores. Fungi belonging to this group do not reproduce sexually. They reproduce vegetatively or by forming asexual spores called conidia. That is why this group is commonly called imperfect fungi. Examples, trichoderma and alternaria. The fruiting body of a fungus called the truffle is a highly sought-after delicacy. It is also famous for being very expensive. Chocolate truffles are named after these fruiting bodies because of a resemblance in their appearance. Some scientists believe that if there were no fungi, our planet would have been covered with a layer of decaying debris several feet high. These helpful organisms have a bad side too. Let us discover the good and the bad sides of fungi. Fungi such as penicillium are used as medicines. Yeast is used in many bakery items, for instance breads, and also in the process of fermentation for the production of alcoholic spirits. Lichens are used as dyes to color fabrics and wool. Delicacies made of mushrooms are consumed across the world. Fungi are also used to absorb materials that are a threat to the environment, including industrial waste, pesticides and oil. This process is called bioremediation. Can you list some of the harmful effects of fungi? Fungi cause various diseases in plants, animals and humans. They are also responsible for infecting and damaging a variety of plants and crops. Some mushrooms are poisonous. Some notorious ones, such as the death cap, can even cause death. So it is very important to eat only mushrooms we know are safe, and not any unknown varieties. Since the dawn of human civilization, many attempts have been made to classify living organisms. During 384 to 322 BC, the first classification of animals was made by Aristotle in his work, History of Animals. Almost at the same time, Theophrastus classified plants in his work, Enquiry into Plants. 
In the 18th century, Carl Linnaeus distinguished living organisms into two separate kingdoms, Kingdom Plantae and Kingdom Animalia. In the mid-19th century, Ernst Haeckel revised the system of classification and divided living organisms into Kingdom Protista, Kingdom Plantae, and Kingdom Animalia. In 1938, Herbert F. Copeland proposed a four-kingdom classification and divided the living world into kingdoms Monera, Protista, Plantae, and Animalia. In 1969, R. H. Whittaker proposed a five-kingdom classification system and divided living organisms into kingdoms Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. The main criteria Whittaker used for classification were cell types, whether prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Levels of body organization, whether unicellular or multicellular. Major components of the cell wall. Modes of nutrition, whether autotrophic or heterotrophic. And their phylogenetic relationship with each other which is actually the degree to which those species share common ancestors. Kingdom Monera includes the unicellular prokaryotic bacteria in which the cell walls are made of polysaccharides and amino acids. Bacteria are either autotrophic or heterotrophic and are further grouped into coccus, Bacillus, spirulum, and vibrium, based on their shape. The group of bacteria living in extreme habitat and lacking peptidoglycan in their cell wall is called the archaebacteria. The true bacteria or eubacteria live in natural habitats. and contain peptidoglycan in their cell walls. The photosynthetic eubacteria are called cyanobacteria or blue-green algae. Heterotrophic eubacteria are the most abundant in nature. They decompose, fix nitrogen, convert milk into curd and act as pathogens. Mycoplasmas are a group of bacteria completely lacking the cell wall and are mostly pathogenic to humans. Kingdom Protista includes unicellular, eukaryotic and primarily aquatic organisms grouped as chrysophytes, dinoflagellate, euglenoids, slime molds and protozoans. Chrysophytes include the photosynthetic golden algae and diatoms which act as the primary producers of the aquatic ecosystem. Dinoflagellates are photosynthetic, contain two flagella and yellow, green, brown, blue or red pigments in their cells. Euglenoids are photosynthetic and contain a protein-rich layer, pellicle, instead of the cell wall. Slime molds are saprophytic and are seen as aggregates. Protozoans are heterotrophic and are grouped into amoeboid, flagellated, ciliated and sporozoans. Kingdom fungi includes eukaryotic, multicellular, saprotrophic and parasitic organisms in which the cell wall is composed of chitin. In some fungi a characteristic dicarion phase is present 
where the cytoplasm of two parent mycelia fuses without fusing the two nuclei. Fungi are grouped into four types, depending on the morphology of the mycelium, mode of spore formation and fruiting bodies. In phycomycetes, the mycelium is aseptate and cenocytic, and the spores are endogenous. Ascomycetes are either unicellular or multicellular. The mycelium is branched and septate, the spores endogenous and the fruiting body is called the ascocarp. In basidiomycetes, the mycelium is branched and septate, the spores exogenous and the fruiting body is called the basidiocarp. In deuteromycetes or fungi imperfecti, the mycelium is branched and septate, only asexual spores or conidia are present. Kingdom Plantae includes all eukaryotic, multicellular, autotrophic organisms commonly called plants. The life cycle of plants has two distinct phases, the diploid sporophytic and the haploid gametophytic, which alternate with each other. Kingdom Animalia is characterized by eukaryotic, multicellular, heterotrophic organisms that completely lack cell walls. They depend directly or indirectly on plants for food. The mode of digestion is holozoic, by ingestion of food. The Five Kingdom classification of Whittaker does not include some acellular organisms such as viruses, viroids and lichens.